Hello everyone, Atheatos here. This is the second part of uh, my review and optimization guide uh, for this uh, Asus uh, P5A uh, with uh, one megabyte of onboard uh, CAS. And uh, this video is mainly focused on uh, AGP optimizations, something that uh, was missing from the first part, and uh, also some more information regarding stability and uh, the maximum possible uh, bus speed. But uh, first of all, let's answer uh, some uh, questions. There was a question regarding the differences between the 1 megabyte uh, version and the 512 kilobyte version regarding the BIOS. And to me, it looks like that uh, both boards have exactly the same BIOS. And as I said in my previous videos, the latest uh, version is this uh, 1011 Beta 5. It is also quite easy to check this if you go and uh, see the ASUS website. Asus is one of the few companies that uh, still maintains the web page of their old products. And uh, here in the BIOS you can see that there is only one BIOS and th there is no discrimination between uh, the two variants. Then uh, also here with uh, WPCR, the only profound difference here is this register. On the right I have uh, the configuration of the 512 kilobyte model. And uh, as we can see here, uh, at this position we have 0.8. Uh, so the difference is that uh, here is configured with 1 megabyte uh, CAS and the external tag is enabled. So the other settings uh, look uh, more or less the same. Now, first of all, a correction on the previous video. And it's here on the voltage control for the I.O. Basically, all my tests on the previous video were done with uh, this setting here, that is uh, 3.5 volt. And in the end, this is needed if you want the 120 MHz bus. In this video, because I really tried to find the absolute maximum for my bus speeds, I also did extended use of the two other options. To my knowledge, this voltage uh, controls a lot of stuff. It is basically the voltage for all the stuff that connect to the main chip and the CPU including the memory, the AGB bus, and probably the cast chips. So in the end it can really help uh, to increase the stability when uh, we are operating in uh, high bus rates, but it's not so clear uh, which of all these parts uh, is failing every time before we rise the voltage. So regarding bus stability, in the end uh, I managed to run uh, the 1 megabyte version with a bus of 124 MHz, and this was uh, completely stable but I had to increase the voltage of the I.O. to 3.8 volt. With the 512 uh, kilobyte uh, CAS version, uh, this was impossible. At least impossible with all the optimizations on. The difference between the two boards is probably because the 1 megabyte version, the, the chip is marked by DAS4, while on the other board is uh, DAS5. So the 1 megabyte the version has a faster CAS chip. Though I'm not uh, completely sure if uh, that is the reason. One of the things that uh, you can disable to, to improve your uh, maximum bus speed is uh, this option here in the BIOS, the internal page detection. Uh, in general, I have seen that uh, when you disable this, uh, you gain the ability to go to higher buses, uh, either with or without the CAS enabled. This internal page detection setting can uh, also be turned on and off in Windows. Uh, it is this register here and the second bit here. So if it uh, ends in 7, it is enabled. If it uh, ends in 5, it is disabled. So now let's uh, have a look into the AGP optimization stuff. This is something missing from the first part of this video. And first of all, the AGP driver. This is very important because uh, without this, uh, no matter what, you will have a lot of uh, stability problems. And uh, version 1.9 is what I used in the first video. But uh, there are also other versions that work with this board, uh, like uh, the 2.13. I have now tested all of them and I didn't see any significant difference. Though in general I will not go with a driver older than uh, 1.72. And also the latest one, the 2.13, it's probably more targeted to newer ULI chips. So my recommendation again is to stick with the uh, 1.9 version. Then the new thing is uh, this AGP utility. With this utility you can further optimize your uh, AGP performance. And uh, this was uh, something that was missing from the measurements of the first part of this video. 
Now both uh, the AGB driver and uh, this tool uh, actually relates to one uh, BIOS setting that uh, we have done before. This uh, AGB bus uh, turbo mode. Yes, uh, this option accelerates the AGB performance uh, both in uh, DOS and Windows. But uh, usually the BIOS implementation is uh, quite buggy and uh, sets the internal registers in a incorrect way. Something that is finally fixed by the driver and the tool. So yeah, how this actually works is that uh, the ALI AGP driver uh, has these uh, parameters uh, stored in the registry file and in every boot uh, applies them by changing a series of uh, configuration registers and uh, so overriding uh, any values that uh, these registers uh, had due to settings of the BIOS. The AGP configuration tool is just a nice UI that allows us to change this value in an easy way. Now, given that uh, in the end uh, this option is uh, overwritten by the AGP driver, it doesn't really matter if you keep this enabled or disabled here, but uh, that is only for uh, the Windows, and uh, this option affects also DOS performance. So if you have this uh, disabled, the only way to get a full DOS performance is to first uh, boot into Windows and then uh, restart your system to MS-DOS mode. So in the end it probably makes more sense to keep this enabled and I didn't notice any problems with that in Windows after I installed uh, the driver and the AGP config tool. So let us now go back to our uh, AGP configuration tool. And first of all, what uh, you probably want to do here is to press turbo and uh, hit apply. This uh, more or less uh, configures all the settings for uh, optimal performance. But uh, then if you want to tweak something more, uh, you can uh, check the manual option, where you will get all this uh, full list. And this is useful if you have uh, some uh, incompatibility or uh, some instability. There are a few things to check here. First of all, we can set the AGP speed to 1x or 2x. This might be important for uh, very old uh, graphics cards. And in a similar manner, uh, we can also disable the sideband addressing. Then the important settings uh, are uh, this one, the EW back. The difference between 2 and 3, as I have seen, is probably only enable or disabling the internal page detection. Then we have the GUT mode, that's also very important. And finally, the frame buffer size. Default is set uh, to 16, uh, but uh, if we select all again, it provides a better performance. Uh, of course, uh, when I set uh, turbo in the previous screen, uh, I set up all in this uh, maximum settings. So we hit exit, and then in the main window, we again exit. Here it's asking for a reboot. After the reboot, if we check the PCI PCI bridge uh, registers, we can see here that uh, this one uh, changed from uh, 07 to 0 F. This is because uh, we changed the frame buffer size from 16 to all. Then the rest should uh, look like something like that. And uh, most importantly here these two should be 0. Uh, this is when you set uh, the gut mode to 2. If you have anything more here, uh, your performance uh, will be lower. That means that you probably didn't do something correctly and it is a good idea to reinstall the AGB driver and uh, rerun the optimization tool. Of course, it's important to do all that uh, before installing any VGA driver. And uh, that concludes uh, my AGP optimization guide. Now, I had to repeat uh, some of my measurements uh, because the initial measurements uh, had the AGB driver but was missing the extra optimizations. So I repeated the, the measurement for the top configurations, the K6 uh, 3 Plus uh, with uh, 120 MHz bus for both uh, 512 and 1 MB of uh, onboard CAS. Both uh, configurations uh, had uh, a similar boost from these ATP optimizations, but uh, the amount of boost uh, varies a lot depending on the benchmark. The biggest difference was in uh, 3D Mark 2000 uh, with 22% uh, of boost. And in total, the Windows 3D score was boosted by around 8% with uh, both configurations. That means that uh, nothing really changes here. Uh, the difference between uh, 1 megabyte and half megabyte of onboard CAS uh, is again around 2.5%. Uh, I have to say though that uh, these AGP optimizations do not uh, come uh, for free. When I enabled them, uh, the system was a bit more unstable and I had to raise the VIO to gain back uh, the stability. 
so high bus speeds uh, combined with a fully optimized uh, system it's uh, really a very challenging setup but uh, can yield uh, significant uh, improvements in performance so in the end uh, the top configuration uh, with a fully optimized AGP uh, got a 4400 score in 3 d Mark 99 uh, 3900 in uh, 2000 and uh, 3,770 in uh, 2001. Then I went in and uh, did some more tests uh, with uh, an older graphics card and uh, some old drivers, as it is uh, suggested in uh, some uh, Vogons uh, forums. What I've used here is a GeForce 3 uh, TI200 uh, with a 7.67 driver. Of course I overclocked it, so it was timed a bit higher than the original GeForce 3. Another popular option is the GeForce 2. I actually have the Quadro 2 Pro. This is the best uh, GeForce 2 family card and I overclocked it uh, also. This card was unstable and I had to set uh, the AGP to 1x in the AGP optimization tool and also disable the sideband. But uh, still I think it was a bit unstable. The performance is also quite similar to the GeForce 3 card. So I did all my measurements in the end uh, with uh, yeah, the GeForce 3 Ti200. So here are uh, the results. Yeah, in general uh, 3D Mark 99 and 2000 uh, performed uh, 20 to 25% faster. Same goes for Final Reality and Unreal Tournament. The 3D Mark 2001 score is very low. This first of all is due to the fact that uh, this driver uh, does not support uh, the latest uh, DirectX. So though GeForce 3 supports them, 3D Mark cannot uh, run the fourth uh, game benchmark. Then of course I also checked uh, the numbers and it looks like this is not the only problem. And actually this uh, setup uh, underperforms in uh, all categories in 3D Mark 2001. Also the Quake 3 Arena score is lower. This is uh, also again because uh, this uses OpenGL. Well what is going on here is that uh, the Direct3D API in uh, these AGP drivers, uh, the latest ones, are uh, very heavy. But uh, the OpenGL works uh, just fine. So more or less uh, you could expect a better performance uh, in most uh, Direct3D games using an older version of the graphics driver. And that uh, also means an older graphics card. But uh, this is not true for some of the latest uh, Direct3D games or benchmarks and uh, for any OpenGL games. Then uh, there is another important point here and uh, that is that uh, the motherboard with uh, 512 uh, kilobytes of CAS uh, was totally stable with this configuration, especially with the uh, GeForce 3. But uh, the 1 megabyte version was not stable. Yeah, I was unable to make uh, this configuration work 100% uh, uh, stable. Keep in mind that uh, this 1 megabyte uh, onboard CAS uh, motherboard is uh, something uh, totally unexplored and to my test uh, these two boards uh, behave uh, differently the board is uh, stable enough to run uh, any amount of uh, benchmarks and uh, get your uh, benchmark records let's say but the thing is that uh, one every 10 benchmarks uh, the system freezes as i said this does not happen with the basic uh, 512 kilobyte port i don't know why this is happening uh, i tried all the options in the AGP optimization tool. I even tried to disable the motherboard CAS, uh, but nothing really changed. So yeah, I don't know why this is happening and uh, I have maybe to, to check it a bit more with my other uh, one megabyte uh, CAS boards. Keep in mind that this stability test uh, take a lot of time because uh, I had to run, uh, let's say 3D Mark 2000 uh, for a continuous loop and usually it only broke after uh, half an hour. In the same time, when I installed the newer driver, everything went uh, completely stable, so it doesn't look like a hardware problem. One last thing here is uh, again the comparison between 512 and 1 megabyte of CAS. Uh, with this uh, configuration, uh, the difference is actually a bit uh, larger, uh, up to 3, 3.5% in total. And especially here in the benchmarks that uh, we care the most, uh, it's about uh, 4, 4.5%. As usual, you can find the updated link to these measurements uh, in the description. Then uh, I also tried to go for some records. And uh, here we have uh, my K6 uh, 3 Plus uh, 
clocked at uh, 620 MHz uh, with a 124 uh, MHz bus and uh, fully enabled uh, 1 MB of uh, motherboard CAS. This configuration was uh, completely stable. Uh, I just had to raise a bit uh, my vCore and the voltage I.O. as I said I had to set it to 3.8. Unfortunately my K63 does not go any higher, at least with a reasonable uh, vCore. Of course with this configuration I used all the AGP tweaks and it was uh, completely stable, uh, at least a basic setup. Until uh, of course I went uh, for the GeForce 3 with the 7.67 driver. But uh, as I said, uh, this setup is uh, stable enough to run any amount of benchmarks. And here is the overclock I had on my GeForce 3. And uh, here is the result uh, of this configuration uh, for uh, 3D Mark 99. This is for uh, 3D Mark uh, 2000. It is uh, 4970. Of course, we all know that if you run uh, multiple times a benchmark, uh, you will get a little bit different values. I didn't run uh, too many of them. Um, but I don't think I can break the 5000 uh, mark. At least uh, not until I find uh, a better K63 processor. And uh, here are the details of this run. And uh, with that I will uh, finish uh, this video. I think the review is now complete. Of course you are gonna see this motherboard uh, again and again in the future. So please uh, tell me down uh, in the comments what you want to see next. There are many options, as I have a very big uh, VGA and SuperSocket uh, 7 uh, collection. I can go with uh, testing different uh, VGA cards in this board, or maybe taking some other uh, CPUs, uh, maybe a showdown at uh, 300 MHz this time, or maybe you just want to see some comparison to other uh, ALI boards, or maybe some boards from VRCs. So that is for this video, I hope you liked it, and uh, see you in the next one.